Hello, my name is Bertrand Vickerstedt, and I am located in Mokinstis, which settlers call Calgary, Alberta, and is Treaty 7 territory. Treaty 7 is home to many Indigenous peoples, including the Blackfoot Confederacy, which comprises of Siksika, the Gani and Gainai nations. Uh, it also is home to the Sutina people and uh, the Stony Nakoda people, uh, who comprise of the Bears Paw, Chiniki, and Wesley Nations. Treaty 7 is also home to Alberta Métis Region Number 3. I would like to thank David Barrick for contacting me and inviting me to join this uh, poetry series. I would also like to thank uh, Poetry London in uh, general for hosting this series and for maintaining it throughout the uh, pandemic. Um, many of us have had to adapt to virtual environments and it looks like you folks have done just fine doing that. So thank you for keeping poetry alive. I'm going to be reading to you today from my debut collection of poems. It's called The Response of Weeds. This is it right here. And this is a collection that is um, largely a meditation on black identity and prairie identity and what it means to be black and from the prairies. I tried to explore these poems largely through geography, landscape, and history. And so the poems I'm going to read to you um, today uh, tackle these themes and uh, express many of those things. The first one that I want to read to you incorporates both history and uh, geography. Uh, it focuses on um, rivers, and uh, rivers are one of the themes in this collection of poems. Uh, this one borrows slightly from a very famous uh, African-American poet, uh, Langston Hughes, who many of you have already heard of. Uh, and while you may have heard of his poem called The Negro Speaks of Rivers, this one is called The Negro Speaks of Alberta. The Negro Speaks of Alberta. Once he stood on the banks of the bow, near the confluence of the old man, watching for the common effluence of the South Saskatchewan, the Red Deer, the Saskatchewan, and so on and on and on. I know these rivers that flow past me. I've peered over their banks and I know you do not see me. Once he stood on the banks of this twisted river, released a gleaming arc of relief into its heart. For an untroubled while, their waters flowed together and emptied together out of a distant, unsuspecting mouth. I know these rivers that flow through me. I've peered into their hearts, and still you do not see me. That was The Negro Speaks of Alberta. It's the first poem in the collection. I'm going to move a few poems ahead to um, this one here. It's another river poem. This, is, uh, this poem is called The Bow, and it featured in the previous um, poem that I read to you. Uh, the Bow is a river in which uh, Mokinstis, or Calgary, is situated on. Its headwaters begin in the Rocky Mountains, as so many of the westward flowing, uh, sorry, eastward flowing um, uh, rivers do, and eventually empties out into the Hudson Bay. It also features some history, namely a um, black fur trading family, um, the Bongas, or sometimes called Bungos or Bonzas. Uh, these were uh, black fur traders in the uh, late 18th and early 19th century. One of them, uh, Stephen Bongo or Bonga, is one of the earliest uh, black people to um, set foot in this territory that we now call Alberta. The Bow. I only know rivers. Waters elongated to the unrumpled recitatif of endless land. The bow knows, has tongued and grooved the firmament, baby, of this last best. The bow knows stony and sarsi. The bow knows blood, the buffalo spilled beyond its banks. The bow knows crowfoot, his belly, his old man, softens his reservations, 
curses his Mary. The bow-nose bungo trickles over his chipped-away Chippewa, black and bisected by befuddled namings, by bemused memory, by his own fickle fur trading. With us? With them? Negro? Ojibwe? Exposed by history or submerged below? No ocean, no tide, no salt, no sea, too flat, too far to see. I only knows rivers, baby, but what I only knows disturbs in me. That was the bow. The next poem that I would like to read for you is called King Kong on the Prairies. And I don't think I need to say too much more than that, <laughs> except that um, the famous actor who was um, the damsel in distress that King Kong famously held in his um, savage paw, um, her name is Faye Ray, and she was actually born in southern Alberta um, to a family of Mormons uh, before moving to uh, back to the U.S. Her family was American and to Hollywood and then on to fame. My poem doesn't focus on her, though. King Kong on the Prairies. We've stopped paying him any mind, with nothing of any consequence to climb. What's the point, really? Maybe we should have let him live. Shot through the heart with an elephant gun we brought with us when we came here. The mound of his carcass is the tallest obstacle between here and Saskatchewan. Before we shot him, we had given him a cowboy hat, an original white Russian shumiacher that Smith built later built. It doesn't quite look like a fleck of white pus from a dimpled blackhead from this distance. I remember the king on his island. Back then, I was just one of the savages hired to reinforce the symbolism of his unfettered nature for your cameras. I was good at my job. It's funny to think that we understood our limits too well back then, and that now his serenity adds a special something to this unbroken landscape. And finally, I would like to read to you a poem, which again, the title says it all. It's called, Past the Surface of Whiteness. Now I'm looking at a field coping under a layering of spring snow. A moment ago, it was actual spring. A moment before that, it was permanent winter. Now I am led to believe in the dumb patience of fields, not unintelligent nor quiescent, but unhurried, hewn and hewed in quiet. If whatever dreams beneath poked a tendril of color past this new surface, it would provide a new birth, starving in a world of white. Or startling. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoy all the rest of the poetry from this series. Thank you again.